longer be necessary. But of course, what we're finding out is that there's other uh, insidious aims behind our government's foreign policy. And, uh, and, that, and they want to keep it that way. They want to keep massaging the news so that they can act in the interest, largely nowadays, of economic interest, investment interest. Uh, that's what was so interesting to hear that Kevin Rudd was actually incredibly frank about China recently. Um, and, uh, you know, quite open about the fact that they are quite Shaky. belligerent, that they are very aggressive in asserting their interests, and they actually think the Western Alliance is going to have to watch that and take care. And that's really important because at the moment, um, it's not just the big mining corporations that are investing uh, heavily in Queensland, an enormous number of the big corporations that have such a hold over the Queensland government, not just the Australian government, but the Queensland government, are big Chinese government corporations that are set on ripping the heart out of Queensland. Um, and so this is a really important issue for the peace movement, for the international human rights movement and for the environment movement, that much of the secrecy is about hiding investment interests and these corporations want to go into places like Central Asia, like Azerbaijan. They want to keep investing in Africa and keep the blood diamonds trade going. They don't want the international civil society rising up in arms, which is what this potentially has, you know, has the potential to do. That finally we can start building real links with people, civil society in these countries that are suffering from these brutal regimes because we can start pressuring our own governments to stop telling the lies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Libby. Some incredibly important points there. One of our speakers today unfortunately had to pull out, that was Ross Daniels, um, former leading figure in Amnesty International and uh, at QT Academics, so uh, unfortunately Ross can't make it, he had uh, health issues, but um, I do have a statement I'd like to read from someone else who couldn't be here today but wanted, wanted this statement read, and this is uh, Associate Pre Professor John Austin, he's from the University of Southern Queensland and uh, He's an yeah, Associate Professor of Education and part of the Critical Educators Network. So I'll just go through John's statement for the rally today um, before going on to our next speaker. He says, Courage is a quality and act that is much celebrated, admired and drawn up by contemporary society and those who, are, who demonstrate it are valorised. Typically such vaunted displays of courage are to be found in the military, business and sporting arenas. Courage is needed when there is a likelihood of serious, perhaps extreme resistance and opposition to the aim of the actor, where there is some likelihood of personal injury, harm or death as a result of her or his actions. Many, perhaps most, acts of courage are underpinned by a certain morality, a sense of what is right and proper in the particular situation. Courageous people are usually held up to the rest of the community as models of exemplary behaviour. Julian Assange, through his work with WikiLeaks, has displayed the civic courage that I'm talking about. He has displayed the type of behaviour that all thinking citizens of this community should aim to emulate. He has spoken for the majority in the face of increasingly vicious opposition from the military, political, industrial triad. His work is aimed at exposing the immoralities that have led to millions being killed and seriously injured through secrecy. He has exposed the manipulative processes whereby majority interests are reconstructed through a lack of information flow, through a civic unthinkingness. He has demonstrated the ways in which which a citizenry deliberately schooled in and for political ignorance can have their support deviously and deliberately manipulated. That these sorts of actions, these hits at the militaristic, neoliberal and neoconservative body corporate have attracted swift and high level retribution is not surprising. What is surprising is the determination of Mr Assange to continue his refusal to, bow, to be bowed in the face of such immoral and in some cases illegal restrictions. Another crucial feature of a genuine democratic politics is the present and active solidarity. The present and activity of solidarity. This is what the community must present to Mr Assange. Solidarity in the face of the threats, bogus legal actions and calls to outright terrorist action against him. 
I can see no other way to describe calls for Mr Assange's assassination. The community must defend Mr Assange and WikiLeaks. It must resist threats to individual and community knowledge. The community must speak truth to power to draw upon a much used but never more relevant rally cry. The future of democracy is the price of our failure. Thank you, Julian Assange, for showing the courage you have and continue to do so. It's from <laughs> Professor John Austin from the University of Southern Queensland. Just before our final speaker, um, we are going to go on a quick march around the city just to bring the message to the streets, but I have one more short message um, from someone else who would have liked to make it today but couldn't. It's uh, Australian writer John Birmingham. Uh, for anyone who's yeah. read or seen or seen the play, he died with a falafel in his hand. Uh, John also writes for the Brisbane Times and has some active blogs. Um, he's been in a Twitter war with Andrew Bolt over the last couple of days, so he couldn't make it. But uh, he was very busy, but he, he did give time aside to write this statement for the rally today. John Birmingham says, Julian Assange has started no wars. His bombs have never fallen on wedding parties. His helicopter gunships have raked no streets with fire. Julian Assange has never imprisoned anyone who tried to escape the wars he did not start. The deserts are not peopled by the prisoners of his policies. Julian Assange is a man who has been scapegoated for the epic failure of states. He is not perfect, nor is his creation. In that he is like all of us, and like all of us he has rights, which some powerful forces would prefer to see negated. His rights are ours, his loss is ours, and those rights must be defended. John Birmingham. So I'd like to introduce our final speaker for the day. That's uh, Ian Rintel. Ian Rintel's been an activist for many, many decades, and. You might have read about him in the international media as a representative of the, the Refugee, Ro Refugee Action Coalition. One of the most extraordinary WikiLeaks about Australia that's come out is the, the exposition that the refugee issue, the asylum seeker issue, was used cynically by both sides of politics and was discussed amongst themselves in such a cynical way. In, in, in the, the Liberal Party, a Liberal Party operative saying that the more votes, the better. The more votes that come create such a political bonus for the, the Liberal government in the last election campaign that it was certainly a positive thing. That's the truth of what was happening inside the Liberal Party, not what we heard through the newspaper and parroted by the mainstream press. So Ian's going to address the rally now. Please give Ian Rintel a warm welcome. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, you. Um, yeah, I'd like to first start to acknowledge the traditional owners. I think, uh, what is it, 200 odd years on, we're still searching for the truth about the mistreatment that was uh, inflicted on them 200 years ago. We're still searching for the truth about what actually happened at Palm Island and many other instances of black death in custody. Uh, I also want to um, acknowledge the people who are suffering on Christmas Island, the tragedy on, uh, that happened on Wednesday, and the uh, their, their determination to make sure that that tragedy is not going to go unnoticed, is not going to be in, and not going to be in vain. I'm also echoing uh, Gary and other speakers. I want to acknowledge uh, the private, uh, private Bradley Manning. I think that we must make sure that free Bradley Manning is on every piece of WikiLeaks literature that we put out. It will be a pyrrhic victory if we defend Julian Assange and they are able to uh, to harass Bradley Manning and keep him in, keep him in prison. Every so often, every so often some little thing comes along which throws a window on the way the system really operates, which allows us to see it much more starkly and much more clearly. And that's what WikiLeaks has done. It is why the ruling class around the world, the rule, our, our rulers around the world are united in their attempts to actually shut WikiLeaks down and done everything that they can to shut WikiLeaks down and to the disgrace of you know, things like MasterCard and PayPal and all the rest of them. I've, there's too long a list now to name them. It is very, very clear who the rulers of the United States and who supports the rulers of the United States in an attempt to keep, the, uh, to keep their system actually operating. They're quite happy to take MasterCard down here in the mall for, the, for, the, for David Jones and all the rest of them. You try and use MasterCard to, 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 